you're not taking full advantage of LinkedIn Sales Navigator, otherwise you wouldn't be here, would you? I bet it has something to do with finding the right accounts and the context within them being a challenge. Personalizing your messages takes too much time, and you're probably wondering if sending emails is even worth it. The best reps know how to use LinkedIn's features to build pipeline and how it fits into the outbound motion as a whole. It's not rocket science. You just need someone to show you what are all the ways you can use it and how to adapt it to your daily flow. Hi, I'm Victor, a full cycle account executive turned sales manager with 10 years of B2B sales experience. And on this channel, I cover topics from prospecting to closing and everything in between. And by the end of this video, you'll know how to use Sales Navigator the right way, or at the very least get reassurance that you're doing your very best. Let's do this. You know where most sales reps mess up outbound? Two things really. First, they go into a cold call or cold email with the goal of booking a meeting. Yes, that's the ultimate goal, but it's why you're making mistakes like prompting the prospects to book a meeting with you. Cold. And I used to do the same. Today, however, I'm in the mindset of starting a conversation so I can either inspire my prospects to get on a call with me, or at the very least collect insights I can use to make a better business case for the next person on my list. The second mistake reps make is sequencing prospects completely cold, without knowing who you are, what you do, or having any reason to trust you. That's why many struggle with response rates below 1% and then try to make up for it by sending even more emails. Like that's gonna work. Instead, you want to warm up your prospects. The outbound flow I use is building a list of target accounts based on my ICP, finding the relevant personas within them, and then start nurturing them with social selling. Likes and other reactions, valuable comments under their posts and posts of influencers they may follow, and posting valuable content regularly that my prospects won't want to miss out on. That's where Outbound starts. After a few weeks of nurturing, your prospects will likely be familiar with your name, your company, and what value you bring to the table. They're much more likely to open, read, and respond to your messages. Start doing this and you're already ahead of most sellers out there. All you need to do next is make your messages relevant and timely by finding a valid reason for reaching out, or in other words, a trigger, and customizing your message to the persona. How does SalesNav help us do this? The first thing you'll want to do is build a customer-facing LinkedIn profile so people don't get the feeling they're going to get pitch slapped within five minutes of accepting your connection request. I have a video explaining how to do this step-by-step -step, and I'll leave a link to it in the description below. When you first open SalesNav, you're landing on the homepage where you can access your accounts, leads, and notifications feed. By default, this will be empty, but as you start adding companies and prospects to your list, you'll start seeing their activities here. To make this feed useful, you want to set up your notification preferences by clicking that little gear icon on the top left corner of your feed. Here you can set your stalking mode, basically what prospects see when you view their profile, what types of emails you'd like to receive from SalesNav, and what type of alerts you would like to see on your feed so whatever is there is immediately actionable. When you're done with this, you'll want to head over to the right side of the screen and set up your personas, which will save you a ton of time manually typing in titles and seniority when building your prospecting list. Speaking of which, let's head over to creating your first lists. SalesNav lets you build accounts list in three different ways. Uploading your book of business from either a CSV or CRM integration, by searching for accounts based on firmographic information such as headcount size, industry and location, and lastly by building lists manually. Why on earth would you want to build this manually? Maybe you want to keep tabs on the competition, influencers and strategic partners. For example, I have a list of cool sales tools which makes it easy for me to keep up with the latest insights that I can use for my consulting business. Also, when I finally become a YouTube influencer, I can target these tools with messages to sponsor my videos. On that note, if you're enjoying this video, you can help me out by smashing that subscribe button. Moving on. LinkedIn offers three types of subscriptions for sales folks. And if you have SalesNav Advanced or Advanced Plus, you even have access to insights features such as Sales Insights and Buyer Intent. Sales Insights is basically account search on steroids, which is useful for territory planning and honing in on your ICP more precisely. Buyer Intent, on the other hand, shows you accounts where people are researching your company LinkedIn page or searching for similar products to yours. SalesNav separates these two cases into Buyer Intent and a Category Intent column. For the second one to work, you need to set up your product section under the company LinkedIn account. But I don't have experience with this, so I'm open to be corrected here. Bottom line is, this feature helps you prioritize which accounts and contacts to go after first if you have thousands of prospects in the list. Tackle the low-hanging fruit first. Assuming you already set up your personas at the beginning, you can easily filter for the right people to go after within your target accounts. 
either pick a specific company if you're an enterprise rep mapping out your accounts or if you're an SMB rep you can just select a list of accounts and filter for the type of persona you want to go after. To help prioritize you can toggle engagement filters on and off like show me only people who viewed your profile or posted on LinkedIn recently. That way you know they're active on the platform so they're likely going to see your messages. But the most important thing in my opinion is to filter this list for a specific trigger. In my case, one good reason for reaching out is if they're working as a revenue leader at an account which is hiring sales reps and the sales team has already grown 25%. After doing five minutes of research, I can send them a message like, Hi name, saw you've grown the sales team by 25% in spite of an economic downturn and still have some open roles to fill. With all of this going on, you must have thought about ways to ram the team faster, to do more with the team you already have in seat. Has hiring an external sales coach crossed your mind to take some of that load off your shoulders? But for now, this is just a static list. Don't you wish you were notified of new leads that match this same search criteria? That's where saved searches come into play. Plug in your target accounts, filter for the given persona, and if someone is hired or promoted to that role, you'll now get notified so you can add them to the same sequence with similar messaging. That's the true power of Sales Navigator. But most of the time, we won't get a response to our first message, and we need a way to reach out to the right people at the right time. Enter SmartLinks. If you haven't heard, SmartLinks lets you see if prospects are engaging with the materials you send them. This feature is only available for SalesNav Advanced and Advanced Plus users, and I've used them a ton throughout the entire sales cycle. I've shared proposals, competitor comparisons, and even customer success stories. Every time a prospect viewed the link, I got an email saying what they checked out and for how long. This helped me understand what they were interested in and tell me that I should reach back out because now it's on top of their mind. Today I only have the SalesNav core subscription, so I no longer have access to SmartLinks. But you can just as easily replace this feature with buyer enablement tools like Trumpet and Aligned. These let you track engagement and collaborate with buyers throughout the entire customer lifecycle. I'll leave a list of 12 popular buyer enablement tools in the description so you can look around if you're interested. Now for the feature most people use wrong, InMails. InMail is not for the first touch. When people don't know who you are and feel like they're in for a pitch, they're just gonna archive the message. And InMail credits cost money. To make things worse, LinkedIn isn't doing us any favors either by marking InMails in your inbox as such. But not many know that if you do get a reply to your email, you get a credit back. So by shifting your mindset from booking a call to starting a conversation, you're actually doing yourself a favor. Here's an example of a good email I received recently. It's probably a template, but because it's highly targeted, it feels personalized. Rob starts by asking a question that got me thinking. Should I be doing subtitles in other languages? He got me curious, so I read on. His list was clearly aimed at an unaware or problem-aware audience, and so he educated me on a problem someone similar to me was facing and what impact they were able to make. The message isn't pushy, it's completely tentative and focused on exploring if what he's offering is even remotely interesting to me. But above all, the message is about me, not him. Then he finishes with a technique recruiters and financial advisors love using. I'm not trying to sell to you, I'm asking if you know anyone who might find value in this. In hopes that I'll buy it of course. Finally, he ends by offering something for free. It looks exclusive. It looks scarce, and the barrier to entry for me is low. Even though the offering doesn't make sense to me because my ideal audience speaks English, I absolutely loved his approach. My guidelines for sending in mails is above all to keep it short. I personally use it as a replacement to voicemail or as a follow-up email. My goal is to draw attention to a previous email or to educate on a problem like Rob did. I even use videos here. You want to keep the subject line short so more of your message fits the preview and personalize both the first line and the last line. This is important because LinkedIn on desktop will show the top part of your email, while on mobile it shows the bottom part first. Even better of course if the whole message fits on the mobile screen. That's it for InMails. Now let's wrap things up by going over some sales nav do's and don'ts. There's a lot of things you can do on sales nav, but don't forget, it's just a tool. A means to an end. That also means you probably don't need to use all its features, or there's a better way of doing them. Take account mapping, for example. Do you really want to map out all the stakeholders in a tool where you need licenses for everyone you want to collaborate with? I'd rather do it in a Google Sheet or a Miro board where the whole go-to-market team can pitch in. 
You can also add notes on their leads and contacts, but why bother? Do you really want to contact switch next time you're following up? Collect your notes instead in your sales engagement tool of choice so when it's time to follow up, all the information you need is in a single place. Added bonus is that these sync with the CRM automatically so you save yourself a ton of admin too. Smartlinks are powerful but won't support you along the entire buyer journey. Instead, leave them for the outbound process and then switch over to a buyer enablement tool as soon as the op is created. Lastly, avoid my guilty pleasure of wasting time on the sales lab mobile app. It's great for field sales reps catching up before a face-to-face -face visit. But don't try to do outreach from there. Let's be honest, you'll get more work done on your desktop. SalesNav, however, is one of the best tools out there for building accounts lists and prospecting lists, for researching contacts before reaching out or following up, and for getting prompts on the best times for following up with prospects. I recommend it to anyone in B2B who's serious about growing revenue through direct sales. If you enjoyed this video and are hungry for more, you'll love this next one right here. Don't forget to like and subscribe first and then see you there.